Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and today I thought we'd have a uh, quick look at this. This is the Memotech um, ZX81 add-on keyboard which I'm planning to use for my um, little ZX81 project. And I got this many years ago in a bundle with some ZX81 stuff. It's not exactly in, shall we say, A1 condition. It's uh, missing the side there and it has a few issues which we're going to go over. It does basically work in that some you can press some keys and it responds on the um, keyboard but apart from that it has got some um, issues which we thought we would uh, have a little bit of a look at in this video today anyway so without further ado I'll fire it up and uh, we can just have a quick look what it actually does and doesn't do so uh, we switch the um, switch the old Z on you can see we've uh, got our cursor there now one does nothing two does nothing Three, four, five, six, six works as you can see there, six works, seven works, eight works, nine works, zero works, shift doesn't press down. Now this is one issue, somehow the whole board seems to have shifted, so all the keys down this side of the keyboard don't actually really, oh, if you really hammer them they do, but the kind of they don't go into the um, pressing there they actually kind of like jam like if you really hammer on them they do, do seem to do something but they don't press down properly like the other keys anyway where was we up to so shift obviously doesn't work let's go Q Q works W doesn't work E just about works R seems to work T works, Y works, it's not too bad, U, I, O, A, S, D, F, G, G seems okay, H, J, K works, L works, that's another of them keys that seems to be stuck, I don't know about the shift, Z works, X works, C works, it's a bit sticky, V, V just about works, actually giving them a few presses like that can sometimes get a, a key which isn't working uh, back to life, N seems okay, M seems okay, what's that thing, give us a shift works, yeah, Shift does work, and that keyboard, and again, that is uh, stuck as well. So most of the keyboard does seem to actually function. We've got uh, some keys up there all in a row which aren't working. So we could have a broken track or something which is taking them out. Um, oh, they could all just be bad. These keys need looking at to see if we can actually get them to press down again properly. And I thought we'd just have a general look inside this thing and actually uh, see how it ticks. See, actually, see how this keyboard interfaces to the. Uh, ZX81 because I must admit I've never actually opened one of these things up and had a uh, had a good look inside so I'll uh, I'll switch the ZD off I'm just going to plug them on because we don't need that powered at the moment we'll get the screen out of the way we'll disconnect this from the uh, from the ZD let's put the ZD to one side for now and let's have a look at this thing let's have a uh, have a look what we've got in here. I'm all all I'm expecting really is perhaps a little bit of 74 series logic or something. But we will open it up and we'll have a uh, a brief inspection inside this. It's, uh, it's these horrible little plastic things. They're not like a screw. They're or an alloy bolt or anything like a little plastic tab that you kind of just have to pull out. And uh, they are quite old, and I can guarantee at least some of them are going to break off. Not that it matters much. We're going to have to do some work on this anyway. May even end up replacing them with some um, little screws. Let's try on this side. See if we can winkle this off. Yeah, there we go. To be honest, I'm, if I use this uh, part of the interface, uh, I probably won't use the case of it. I'll just use the this part. Oh, perhaps it's got more on it than I thought it would. 
we've got on the back. We've just got an edge connector on the back, so that's how it uh, connects to the old uh, Zeddy. Got a, uh, a designation for the PCB there, and what have we got on it? We've got um, 74 LSO3, oh, um, 30, sorry. We've got a 74 LS27. Um, We've got a 74 LS365 and we've got a um, 74 LS 244N so it is just I'll, I could I'll look them up and see what they are at a uh, later date but it is basically just a, um, a load of jelly bean logic on there we've got a load of presume protection diodes there and we just have the um, the ribbon cable actually that's quite nice it doesn't use that many lines if we've got one let's see if we can count these one two Three, four, five, six, seven, ten. I think 12 I think it uses like 12 lines there so that's not bad at all <coughs> it means that I can um, I can get a nice piece of cable and actually make a, a bit of a better um, cable coming off the computer than uh, this and have it so I can have a plug on the back or on the front somewhere to actually uh, plug the keyboard in but yeah so let's uh, let's get further into this thing and have a look inside it Winkle this off. I do rather like this um, this case. It's certainly going to suit what I'm building anyway. So ease this off without trying to break it. Great. And what I will have to do is I'll have to make another one of them because obviously on that side it's uh, it's missing, and it was like that when I got this thing. So, what I do have, if you remember from um, a previous uh, video, is I have uh, that that we salvaged out of that old OB um, rack. Now, oh look at that. It's pretty much made for it. Yeah, I can just get it out of that. If you look there, it fits on, so I can mark around that, I can cut it out. A nice piece of black brushed aluminium. I can uh, I can make a new end plate for that out of that, and that's the reason I don't throw any of these um, odd little bits and bats away. So let's see if we can get the uh, get the keyboard out of this case. Now, how does it come out? Ah, all right. That's so. Obviously, the reason that them keys were stuck is that actually slides. It's, yeah, it's stiff, but. Yeah, it's actually just pulled out enough now that them keys that weren't going down properly before are actually going down now. So, I wonder if one of these we can actually pull out and that will allow us to slide, yeah, slide the keyboard out. Mm. But yeah, that's stiff. That's definitely not been out for 30 odd years. Dear me, that is stiff. Be interesting to see what type of keys they've used, um, key switches they've used on this thing. I mean, obviously the ZX City One was always a a low price computer, but this keyboard actually looks fairly uh, fairly nice, fairly well made. So I like good solid. It's like the uh, keyboard on my um, what's it, my three eighty Z. That's um, like a metal substantial keyboard as well. That's rather nice. There we go. That's pulled it out of that way. Bloody hell! That was stiff. Well, anyway, we've uh, we've got that out, and we can easily get that back in as well. Well, not easily, but we can get it back in. Right, we've got an earth connection down there. We need to undo. See what we can get hold of to get that out. I got. I thought that's employers I found. Uh, ah, that's going to use the proper tool, I think. Or a proper tool. Uh, yeah. I think we've got a nut spinner here or something that'll bring it out. That's far too big. So look at you. Are you small enough? Smaller still. Too small. Still too small. 
Oh, that's odd. <coughs> Let's try this one. Nope. I've got both metric and imperial in here, and I'm not having a lot of luck. That's nearly it, and that's five mil. Six mil's too big. So it's obviously an imperial size. Uh, that's just cheap. Cheat. There we go. Let's see if we can get this out. There we are, that's out. Well, to the back there. Get that out. Right, and hopefully now we can slide um, the keyboard. At least we hope we could slide the keyboard out now. Let me try and pull this side out and then give us a bit of leverage. Whew. I think a bit of this is the fact that it's aluminium and the aluminium's corroded a little bit over time. It's certainly not the easiest thing to... Ah, there we go. To get apart. Now, hopefully, this is going to be awkward. I can tell this is going to be awkward. I don't want to try and break the styrofoam either, because I think that needs to go back in. That's how it holds. Oh! A nice bit of melt into the styrofoam there, but... That's our missing side. <laughs> Must have been shoved underneath the uh, underneath the styrofoam for some reason. Right now, hopefully now we can get this, um, this rather dirty board out. Let's give it a push. Still not wanting to uh, release from this case. I don't want to give it too much force because I don't want to risk damaging it. Really, let's uh, give it a bit of. I don't think it's a very expensive uh, type of board that they've used. So we can flex the case a bit and perhaps get it to free off. It's free from that side by the look of it. It just seems to be stuck in the back. Yeah, that's definitely on the... Uh, on the stuck side. Let's. Hmm. Just have to come off the bench a little a second. Ah. There's no glue or anything holding it. It's just stuck. I don't want to really risk. Try to drive it out with anything in case I damage it. I could try a very gentle tap just with the back of that, see if it'll free off. No, no, I'm going to risk damaging the actual board if I do that. But then again, I've got to get the thing out because uh, otherwise I've no way of sorting them dodgy keys out. I don't think just squirting, uh, I mean, we could try it, I suppose. We could try. Just take. They look very much like the type of keys used on a, um, a BBC. Yeah, I think they might be uh, the same as used on a BBC Micro. Around like that. I've got some BBC Micro um, spare keys kicking about in one of my other stores somewhere, so I'll have to, uh, I'll have to look. Let me. Uh, let's try squirting a little bit of switch cleaner into that. Um, If I can get my, uh, if I can get my nozzle. Unfortunately, I lost the uh, nozzle off uh, my WD-40, and I keep having to swap it between my um, switch cleaner and my WD-40. Now we'll have to get another uh, 
another one. Right, anyway, there we go. Let's try giving that a shot of um, a shot of that stuff and work it about a bit. It doesn't always work with keys, but it does tend to work more with these um, BBC style keys than it does other keys. In fact, I might actually try squirting a little bit of WD down that runner there, see if I can get it to free off. Right, we'll just do that now. We'll just spray a little WD into that runner that's uh, not free enough. We'll spray a little bit into that side as well. It can't do any harm and it might just free the board out so we can actually slide the board out of the case then and we can actually um, have a go at uh, giving it a clean up. Right, we'll reconnect that to the ready board anyway. Make sure we've not got anything we can short out. We'll uh, power the monitor back up. That's back to life. We'll switch the ZD on. And let's try one. Look at that now. Can you see that? We now have... One does work. Oh. Oh, two started working now. And three. And four. And five. And six. And seven. Eight, nine, zero. See if shift works. Yep, shift works. Let's try P. That's print function. That seems to work. Space break. Let's just give it for just for fun. Ten. Let's print. Oops. Turn. Print. All right, we've got a we've got a dodgy e there. Yeah, I think E's not working. Yeah. Well, we've got some um, characters there anyway, haven't we? Now that's strange because I think they were things that were working last time. Uh, new line. And then let's put um, 20, and that's go to 10, new line, let's run that, oops, hang on, no, that's not what you press, is it? Uh, no, where's back? Do we have a back or a, yes we do, uh, what we want to press is, Oh, and run's not working. Well, that's a bit of a pain. Loaders. So it's definitely got issues, this um, keyboard, um, 100%. Like I said, some of these keys seem to be working before, but they're uh, not working now, so they're definitely on the intermittent side. Right, we'll, uh, we'll give up on that. I wonder if that um, WD was squirting in there has had any... Uh, had any, uh, no it's not really, have it? There we go, that's it. It was just, uh, one thing holding it. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a bit on the, uh, on the filthy dirty side, so we're going to have to do some cleaning in here. But there really is nothing to it. It's, the, like, the most wafer-thin cheap um, phenolic uh, PCB you can get. Obviously hand assembled, judging by the soldering on the back. Just clear my uh, bench, bench off of all this crap. But yeah, I think it should clean up alright. What I'll probably do is I'll go through the keys. Get some of this muck and rubbish off it. I'll go I have a feeling they may actually have glued it at the, at the back there, originally. It does look like it's, yeah, it's like a glue, I think, just along that back edge to keep it in uh, position. So I'll possibly have to do something again to keep it um, centred, stop it moving about when I reassemble it. But at least now we've got it flat on the bench like that, I can go through it properly, find any of these keys, 
that are absolutely shot and um, what I will do is I'll probably just replace them um, with BB I think I'm pretty certain that very, looks very much like a BBC style key switch let's fire it back up for one last time and see uh, now it's flat on the bench whether everything's going to work on it 10 print shift No, so we've got a bad E, and we've got um, a bad R, in fact let's just give that a quick try now, let's just whip that key off, that E, come on, how you come, there we go, let's give E a quick shot of switch cleaner, like that, give him a, a work up and down, no, we've got a bad E. Have we got a bad E or have we got another fault? What we can find out with that is basically we can try shorting out that key and see if we get an E coming up on the screen there. So, that, does that signify E there? Let's have a look. Yeah, I think, judging by it, those two contacts there are E. So if we short them out with my screwdriver, Oh, we aren't getting anything. Right, so it may not be. Let's try something with a better contact. And let's just double check that that is definitely the. Yes, that's definitely the key switch there. We'll use these scissors or something to try and get a definite. Ah, oh no, I think we just hit hit a wrong key then. did. No, I don't think we're getting uh, that E to work. So we could have a break in the cable there, and that could be stopping the um, E from working. Or we could have a fault with one of the um, Jelly Bean Logic on um, here. One of the uh, 74 series Logic on here could be faulty. Um, I don't think it's the con connection on the actual um, Zeddy there, because I have made sure that's nice and um, clean previously. It's nice, good, clean contact that. Uh, we'll just try about what we can try doing. I'll switch the uh, ready off for this, just to be on the safe side. But if we set my uh, continuity tester to continuity, yeah, you can hear that. And then if I get my finger underneath and put that on there and that on there. Yeah. The key is fine. So, we have, in fact, let's try R as well, because R wasn't working, and R is the next one along. Yeah, and R is fine. So, we have a fault, not on the switches by the look of it. I think our fault is either going to be the cable between the two, which, if you can see, it is rather bent and... Um, gnarled about or our fault is going to be one of the um, 74 series logic on the board here but that's going to be a fairly easy fault to um, sort out but I'm uh, I'm probably going to leave that for another day because it's actually getting a little late um, at the moment I have um, a job that I've got to get up very early for so unfortunately um, so I'm probably going to leave it here for now um, yeah, in fact, I am. I'm going to leave it here for now. In the next uh, video, we'll see if we can actually get this board fully working. We'll pull, um, we'll test the cable. Um, if it's not the cable, then we'll have a look at um, tracing it through to whichever of the um, 74 series logic ICs actually deals with whichever um, key switch we are looking at. Because it basically, it'll basically do its own matrixing, I think. I think that's how it um, basically works, and then just sends it onto the... Uh, sends it onto the processor there so yeah that's I think that's what we'll do in the next video we will um, delve into that and uh, we'll take a good look at that and see if we can actually get this board working properly last thing I will show you is um, I've actually made my surround for the uh, Z screen so basically this is what that's going to do obviously it's going to get painted as well this won't be red um, it's just what I had to make the surround from 
and obviously this is not going to be plastic there is a, a nice brushed metal finish under there which I'll probably end up painting as well but uh, just to give an idea what it's kind of going to look like we're going to get that kind of um, we're going to get that kind of effect there if you can see that so yeah I'm going to uh, leave it at that for now um, I hope you enjoyed that little um, update on this ZX81 project so uh, thanks for watching and uh, goodbye